Because the truth is really that as, as difficult and um, awkward and uncomfortable as admitting our embarrassment at making mistakes can be, um, it, is, it is in fact really quite endearing and it is one of the fastest ways to actually have the people around us respect us better and like us better. If we can honestly um, admit, hey, that was really stupid what I did and I feel pretty embarrassed about that really. Um, hey, sorry. Um, you know, people go, oh, that was all right. Hey, it's all right. You know, this person's all right. And, um, you know, it's, it's really this kind of humility and, you know, as, as um, you'll see in your booklets, you know, what's written at the end here, you know, our success in life does not come from our superiority, but really our willingness to serve each other. And if you think of any job or any, um, you know, anything that you're really going to be rewarded for, or you're really going to be paid for, or you're really going to be appreciated for in your life, um, it'll usually have very little to do with you being superior to anybody else. And, you know, as this quote says, a lot more to do with how willing you are to, to be of service, how, how willing you are to actually, you know, often even humble yourself to say, okay, you know, I'll help you with something that, you know, somebody else may feel is beneath them. Mm. It's amazing. I don't know how many times you guys in the audience and those watching at home have been in the position of being a boss and you, all of a sudden you are completely 100% in service to the people underneath you. Mm. It, it's a complete head trip. The times I've been managing lots of people, I feel like I've, I've been a complete slave to the job of being the manager, and I've been 100% in service. And really, there wasn't a lot of time to sit back and relax and enjoy the benefits of it, because I was constantly thinking of how I'm going to support these people around me. In that same line, if you've ever worked in, in a um, position where you do have people working under you, as we say, um, or that you have people that you are managing, um, you know, maybe you've experienced this, but how completely annoying it is when you have staff that want to prove that they're better than everybody else all the time mm. and that that's what they're there for. <laughs> you know, it can really get you to the point where you're tearing your hair out. You know, really, the best employee is somebody who actually realises that they're in service um, to usually somebody else's plans and ideas and knows the right time to offer, you know, their creative input or, or what they have to... to um, to share, but in a way that's really working with the collective and with the team, rather than trying to prove um, that you know they're the bestest and the greatest. Guilty as charged, just trying to pretend that I'm the greatest and best at the job. <laughs> I think we're all guilty mm, of that. Sure, thing. absolutely. But um, you've come a long way, that's for sure. Thanks. Now you had a bit of a story for us about this. Yeah, the best story that illustrates this, and those that have listened to our radio shows in the past will have heard this before, but the best example of this, there's a, there's a fine line between uh, dependence and interdependence, and the story goes like this. A man was taken, a man passed away, and was taken to hell, and he was shown what hell was like, and in hell, there was a banquet table and there were a certain amount of people around the banquet table that were trying to eat this amazing banquet. But these guys were starving because they had these really long chopsticks that wouldn't actually, they were so long that they went past their mouth. So they're crying and moaning, trying to get these food in their chopsticks from this table. And the guy went, wow, I don't want to be here. This is terrible. This is hell. Get me out of here. So he was taken up the elevator to heaven. And in heaven, there was the exact same banquet table. There was the exact same number of people at the banquet. The people at the banquet had the exact same chopsticks. But in this, in this place, the people were picking up the chopsticks with their food and feeding the person on the other side of the table with it and popping it in the mouth, and vice versa. So everyone was getting fed. So this is an example of interdependence, where we are all dependent on each other. We are dependent on other people and of being in cooperation, and that, of what, how fine is that line? That, you know, downstairs, it's an absolute disaster. Everyone's trying to feed themselves and get nowhere because there's no teamwork, there's no, the kind of dependence, there's no dependence at all. 
So that's a good example of interdependence, and that's where we've often got flack before in the past, Kim, about you know codependence and you know what's the difference between being too dependent on your partner. And uh, can I talk about this? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the, being too dependent on your par partner, this example we bring up of the chopsticks is always one that we always bring back because it really shows that if you can be working as a team, that is positive for everybody. That is a place where you can make some positive movements forward as a team. It is completely and utterly based on dependence. You are dependent on the other person, but it's not dependent on the other person um, acting in a particular way. Or emotionally. Or emotionally. It's just w working working as a team. And that, that is, there is a level of dependence in there. And you shouldn't get too hard on yourself if you do depend on the people around you. Mm. And I think that that's another, sort of clears up another little bit of misunderstanding or, or a little bit of faulty thinking that may have come from through, through psychology of, of talking about codependence and codependence being seen as a bad thing, um, which it is. Um, but I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about what codependence actually is. Um, we prefer to call codependence emotional dependence. Um, and that's when someone is emotionally immature and is using their emotions to try and get what they want from other people, um, being sad so that people will give them attention, being angry to get their way, um, and also needing other people to help them um, feel better, to help them resolve their, their emotions. Now, <clears throat> this is really is a very negative thing and can cause a lot of problems in, in um, relationships and a lot of family dysfunction and a lot of that work is around sort of healing that. Um, but codependence is is not about that it's 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 not okay to depend on each other because exactly I think that's what you're trying to say, isn't it, Steve? Yeah, one hundred percent. Because when you're a family and when you're a team, you need to be able to depend on each other. We need to be able to grow to be interdependent. Independence has been given this um, really big status, you know, in the world now that we all have to be independent. Um, but really, independence is actually something that is good for us to strive for as teenagers. You know, f by full maturity, we really should be past independent and we should be into interdependence where we are somebody that be can be counted on, um, that we are somebody that knows how to trust other people and knows how to work together with other people. Knows how to play team. Yeah, absolutely. That, that is what maturity really is all about. 